tonight. Israeli offense. The Israeli army orders mass evacuation of the Palestinians from Khan Yunis, indicating a potential new ground assault in the Gaza Strip's second largest city. Accidental fire. A Chinese rocket from Space Pioneer unexpectedly lifted off during a static fire test in China's Henan after an anchoring mechanism failure. Jihadist attack. Female suicide bombers killed at least 18 in coordinated attacks on a wedding, funeral and hospital in northern Nigeria with Boko Haram suspected of involvement. And historic milestone. Binyan Gurme makes history as the first black rider to win a Tour de France stage inspiring a new era for African cyclists. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Avadarna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Vinuth Warnasuriya. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We have a very packed bulletin to brief you tonight, starting with the latest developments in Israel. Israel's military ordered the evacuation of areas east of Gaza's second largest city, Khan Yunis, last night after around 20 rockets were fired into Israel by the Palestinian militant group Islamic Jihad. Well, this escalation follows a series of ongoing tensions and the clashes in the region. A World Health Organization official said that Gaza's European hospital was virtually empty with staff and patients fleeing the facility after the Israeli army ordered residents in the surrounding areas to evacuate. The Israeli army had ordered residents of several towns and villages in eastern Khan Yunis to move out their homes prior to tanks re-entering the area the military had left several weeks ago. Israeli forces bombarded several areas of the southern Gaza Strip and thousands of Palestinians fled their homes in what could be part of a final push of Israel's intensive military operations in nine months of war. And over in our region now with yet more weather woes. The northeastern state of India has been inundated by flood waters for several days, affecting more than 600,000 people and killing at least 34. The flood waters left behind a trail of destruction in Assam, as well as parts of neighboring Bangladesh, submerging villages, destroying crops and wrecking homes. The Assam Disaster Management Authority reported that all the rivers following through the state had crossed the danger mark at several places and at least 19 of these states, 35 districts had been affected by floods. Thousands of people are sheltering in the relief camps across the state. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has assured the state of the federal government's help in case of a crisis. Chinese company Space Pioneer accidentally launched the first stage of its Tianlong-3 rocket during a test of the vehicle that went terribly wrong. The rocket crashed and exploded near a city in central China, but no injuries have been reported so far. A Chinese space rocket under development accidentally launched during a test before falling and crashing into the ground. Beijing Tianbing Technology Company, also known as Space Pioneer, said on Sunday that its Tianlong-3 rocket under development detached itself from the launch pad during a test on Sunday due to a structural failure. It then fell and crashed into a mountain 1.5 kilometers southwest of the test site in Gongyi City in central China's Henan province. No casualties were reported. Footage shows the rocket slowly launch before it appears to lose power, crashing down to the ground and exploding. The Tianlong-3 has been developed with the intention of being a reusable rocket. And over in France, despite calls for voters to form a united front against the national rally, the far-right party came out top when the results of the first round of the voting for France's NAP legislative elections were revealed. The national rally's success is likely to see again a majority of seats in the parliament on Sunday, but analysts say it could fall short of the absolute majority it needs. Stand together, reads the front page of French left-wing daily Libération echoing the political left, which is calling for voters to unite, to block the far right's path to power. The only threat that exists is that of the far right. Some 300 constituencies are now facing potential three-way runoff Sunday between the far right's national rally, Emmanuel Macron's centrist alliance, and the left-wing New Popular Front. Left-wing leaders say that they will withdraw their candidates in constituencies where another candidate is better placed to beat the national rally. 
a long-standing practice by France's centre-right and centre-left politicians known as the Republican Front. Nowhere will we allow the national rally to win. And that's why, should they come out on top, while we come in third, we will withdraw our candidacy. The left is taking a clearer line than Macron's centrist camp, some of whose candidates said they would step aside in a three-way runoff, while others said they will only rally behind candidates from the centre-left to the centre-right, asserting that backing the far left's France Unbowed, one of the main members of the new popular front, would be just as bad. National rally leader Jordan Bardella brushed off the prospect of a united front, ruining his party's chances of winning an absolute legislative majority Sunday. I'm not afraid of withdrawals. This is not an anti-national rally front. I saw an alliance that does not make sense between Mr. Mélenchon and Mr. Macron, which dishonors both of them. All candidates through to the runoff have until Tuesday evening to decide whether to run. Talks over the next 48 hours between the parties will be crucial. But whether voters then heed the advice of party leaders is another question. The purchase of vaping products in Australia has become significantly more restrictive with the implementations of string met anti-vaping regulations considered among the toughest globally. Authorities in Australia assert that this move marks the end of vibrant branding and enticing flavours which they believe were strategies aimed at enticing children to use starting nicotine. Australia is putting limits on who can buy and sell vapes. The new rules kicked in on Monday and put the e-cigarettes behind pharmacy counters. It's all part of a bid to curb vaping by young people. Anyone under 18 will need a prescription, and the rules might actually have been tougher. The ruling Labour Party had planned to limit sales to those with a medical need, regardless of age. But that was dropped after opposition from Greens lawmakers, who said it would restrict access for people looking to quit smoking. They said that could put a strain on the health service. The new move drew a mixed response on Sydney streets. The new laws will also limit the concentration of nicotine in vapes and restrict flavours to mint, menthol or tobacco. Known for its strict anti-smoking approach and steep tobacco taxes, Australia has already banned most vape imports. While they are still widely available in stores, the government says its enforcement push has taken many of the products off the streets. Let's take a short commercial break. More World News coming on the other side. And on the road to the White House now. As a major victory for Donald Trump, the US Supreme Court has ruled that former presidents are entitled to some degree of immunity from criminal prosecution. The court's conservative majority, which Trump helped to create, found 6-3 to three that presidents were protected from prosecution for official actions that extended to the outer perimeter of his office but could face charges for unofficial conduct. The U.S. Supreme Court on Monday ruled that presidents have, quote, absolute immunity from criminal prosecution over what the justices said were, quote, official acts. In a critical case over whether Donald Trump can be charged for allegedly plotting to overturn the results of the 2020 election. The landmark ruling recognizes, for the first time ever, any form of presidential immunity from prosecution. The 6-3 to three decision written by Chief Justice John Roberts split down partisan lines and threw out a lower court's decision rejecting Trump's claims of immunity from criminal charges. It ordered the lower court to evaluate which of the alleged crimes in the indictment were, quote, official and therefore immune from prosecution, and which were, quote, unofficial and potentially criminal. The Supreme Court's slow handling of the immunity case has already helped Trump by making it unlikely that any trial on charges brought by special counsel Jack Smith could be completed before the 2024 election. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. 
Smith indicted Trump in August of last year. Trump has pleaded not guilty. Trump's actions alleged in the indictment include efforts to fire and replace officials at the Justice Department, pressing Vice President Mike Pence to illegally reject state electoral votes, and working with state officials to concoct fraudulent slates of electors to support him. The special counsel also accused Trump of fueling his supporters' violent efforts to storm the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. But the Supreme Court ruled that a president has, quote, absolute immunity for decisions governing appointments within the executive branch, including at the Justice Department, and that his communications with the vice president and with his supporters could be viewed as official acts. Liberal Justice Sonia Sotomayor excoriated the majority decision in a dissent, writing, quote, Today's decision to grant former presidents criminal immunity reshapes the institution of the presidency. It makes a mockery of the principle, foundational to our constitution and system of government, that no man is above the law. She added that the majority believed Trump should enjoy immunity from prosecution, quote, and so it invents an atextual, ahistorical, and unjustifiable immunity that puts the president above the law. Donald Trump praised the decision, writing on social media, quote, big win for our constitution and democracy, proud to be an American. The 78-year-old is the first former U.S. president to be criminally prosecuted, as well as the first former president convicted of a crime. President Joe Biden's re-election campaign said in a statement, quote, Today's ruling doesn't change the facts, so let's be very clear about what happened on January 6th. Donald Trump snapped after he lost the 2020 election and encouraged a mob to overthrow the results of a free and fair election. President Joe Biden warned that the U.S. Supreme Court's landmark ruling on presidential immunity sets a dangerous precedent that Donald Trump would exploit if elected in November. In his criticism of presidential immunity, President Biden emphasized that the nation was founded on the principle that there are no kings in America and that everyone is equal before the law. U.S. President Joe Biden on Monday criticized the day's Supreme Court ruling on presidential immunity, which has largely been seen as a win for his election rival, former President Donald Trump. This nation was founded on the principle that there are no kings in America. Each, each of us is equal before the law. In calm, measured remarks from the White House, Biden said the ruling set a, quote, dangerous precedent. For all, for all practical purposes, today's decision almost certainly means that there are virtually no limits on what a president can do. This is a fundamentally new principle, and it's a dangerous precedent, because the power of the office will no longer be constrained by the law, even including the Supreme Court of the United States. The only limits will be self-imposed by the president alone. The U.S. Supreme Court found on Monday in a 6-3 ruling that Trump cannot be prosecuted for any actions that were within his constitutional powers as president, but can be for private acts. It's a landmark ruling recognizing for the first time any form of presidential immunity from prosecution, but stopped short of allowing absolute immunity for all official acts, as Trump's lawyers advocated. The decision means it's unlikely Trump will be tried before the election on charges brought by special counsel Jack Smith over his efforts to undo his 2020 election loss to Joe Biden, one of four criminal cases Trump has faced. On Monday, Biden said the public has a right to know the results of that prosecution before November's election. Now, because of today's decision, that is highly, highly unlikely. It's a terrible disservice to the people of this nation. Biden's remarks were also his first from the White House since his shaky debate against Trump last week, which led to calls for the 81-year-old to withdraw from the race. After stumbling over his words at the Atlanta debate, Biden is being closely scrutinized for signs that he is up to the job of running for re-election and of governing the country for four more years. The U.S. Department of Justice is preparing a plea deal for Boeing to resolve a criminal fraud charge related to the fatal crashes of its 737 MAX jets. The victims' families criticized the proposals as insufficient to hold Boeing accountable for the crashes that killed over 300 people in 2018 and 2019.
This morning, the Justice Department nearing a controversial plea deal with Boeing, the troubled aviation giant charged with conspiracy, accused of misleading FAA investigators after a pair of fatal 737 MAX crashes in 2018 and 2019. Attorneys for the families of the hundreds killed in the crashes say this plea deal would allow Boeing to avoid trial by entering a guilty plea, agreeing to appoint an external corporate monitor and paying a fine of about $200 million far are short of the 20 billion the families have requested. And those families are now outraged. They killed 346 people. Any human who kills that many people or any people at all should be held accountable. And this is just another sweetheart deal between the Department of Justice and Boeing. The news comes just weeks after Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun was grilled on Capitol Hill. At one point, he turned to face the families of some of the 346 victims of those crashes. I want you to know we are totally committed in their memory to work and focus on safety. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk met in Warsaw as the nations with a difficult shared history seek to reinforce cooperation. The leaders will take part in an intergovernmental consultation featuring the country's cabinets, the first such meeting since 2018. Scholz travelled to Poland with 12 federal and state ministers. According to government sources in Berlin, the consultation should provide a strong impetus for good neighbourly relations. A joint German-Polish action plan including several projects is expected to be agreed. Berlin is expected to present a financial package for Poland. It is expected to include compensation for living Polish victims of the occupation by Nazi Germany as well as German aid for the defence of NATO's eastern flank. In addition, money is to be channelled into the construction of the German-Polish house in Berlin. The house is intended to commemorate the complicated German-Polish history and the brutal German occupations during the Second World War and create a place of remembrance for the Polish victims of war. A Cambodian court has handed jail terms of up to eight years to ten activists of environmental group Mother Nature on charges of plotting against the government and insulting the king. The verdict comes amid growing concerns about freedom of expression in Cambodia under Prime Minister Hung Mane, who took power last year after decades-long ruling of his father Hung Sen. The charges relate to Mother Nature's activism between 2012 and 2021, documenting suspected pollution in the Ton Lissap River, which feeds into the largest freshwater lake in Southeast Asia and is a major fishing hub. The group also raised issues surrounding the filling in of lakes in the country's capital, illegal logging and the destruction of natural resources across the country. The additional charges of insulting the king, directed at three of the activists, centre on a leaked internal Zoom meeting regarding political cartooning. Three of the activists sentenced had been previously jailed for organizing a peaceful march protesting the filling in of a lake in the capital to create land for real estate developments. Six others were sentenced in absentia, including Mother Nature's co-founder Alejandro Gonzalez Davidson. The Spanish national was deported from Cambodia almost a decade ago. Multiple explosions by suspected suicide bombers have killed at least 18 people, including children and a pregnant woman in Nigeria's restive northeast region. The incident was the first multiple explosion in the region this year in face of over a decade of terrorist attacks by the terror group Boko Haram and ISWAP. Victims of multiple attacks in Nigeria's Borno state were receiving treatment at this hospital in Madaguri on Sunday. The day before, suspected female suicide bombers separately attacked a wedding, a funeral and a hospital in the town of Gwoza, killing at least 18 according to the head of the local state emergency management agency. Bakindo Saidu said the death toll included children, adults and pregnant women, and that 30 others were injured. No one has claimed responsibility for the attacks. Borno is at the center of a 15-year jihadist insurgency that has killed thousands of people and displaced millions more. Although the Nigerian military has degraded the militants' capabilities, they still carry out attacks against civilians and security targets. Boko Haram and its splinter group Islamic State West Africa province are the most active militant groups in Borno. Borno State Police were not immediately available for comment. Let's go for a short commercial break. More world news right after this.
Welcome back. Biniam Gurme, the Eritrean cyclist, made history by becoming the first black African rider to claim victory in Tour de France stage. Gurme, who was already the first black African to win a Grand Tour stage at the 2022 Giro d'Italia, timed his effort to perfection to beat a Colombian and a Belgian who were in the second and third respectively. This is the moment Eritrea's Biniam Gurmai crossed the finish line at the end of the third stage of the Tour de France on Monday becoming the first black African rider to win a stage in cycling's most famous race. Germay's win for his Intermarché Wanti team is something of a watershed moment for the sport. Only two other African riders, both white, Robbie Hunter and Daryl Impey of South Africa, had previously won stages on the tour. Germay, who was already the first black African to win a Grand Tour stage at the 2022 Giro d'Italia, battled it out at the finish line to beat Colombian Fernando Gaviria and Belgian Arnaud de Lee, second and third respectively. Richard Carapaz took the overall lead, becoming the first rider from Ecuador to wear the yellow jersey, which he snatched from the shoulders of Slovenia's Tadej Pogacar on added places without time differences. The race will now head for the high mountains, notably climbing the lung-busting Col du Galibier in Tuesday's fourth stage as the peloton enters France. Well, that concludes our world news coverage for tonight. Be sure to tune in again tomorrow for more important updates from across the globe. The well, state of Nassina Mahadune will be joining you shortly with the nightly business report. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.